Hello AI coders. I just want to give you a brief introduction into a draft PR I did for the AI assistant Ada. It's about adding read only files as dubs to the chat context. So you can add files without uh, embedding the whole uh, content, just the outline, like it's uh, the same, like the repository map, but it's more specific. The so repository map is built based on the files you add and the ranking mechanism. But this approach is more specific to let the LLM knows about other files and I as a developer can determine which files I want to add with their outlines. I can also hold the context clean that way. I think there are some advantages using that, especially if I want to explore a huge or a big code base is also helpful. But I come back to that later. I just show you how it's intended to work. And later I show two or three real world scenarios how this can be used in practice. So now I go to my IDE here. You see, I'm currently inside the Ada uh, Git repository and I'm working with JetBrains PyCharm. I open Ada from the virtual environment so that I have no conflict with my uh, local installation of Ada. I go to the binary and Ada directory, disable the repository map for now. I say map tokens because now I want to be focused on these features. Okay, so now I'm in Ada and let me quickly elaborate how you can add files currently and then I show you how to use this new command. As you probably know, Ada distinguished between two sections or stages where you can add files. The first one are files intended to be modified by the LLM or by the AI assistant, so to say. It's called add. For example, if we go here to the Ada folder in the tree and just picking up some files, then I can click Control Shift Z to copy the whole paths of all of these files, paste it in here and click on enter. Now I added these files as editable files to their chat context and the LLM is not able to read the file content and modify files. Okay, besides that, we can also add files as reference. These files can come from outside our Git boundaries. If you want to add files, you can only pick them from inside the Git repository. That means if I type in ls for listing all the files, I'm only able to add these files to the chat context. In contrast, if I use the read only command, I'm able to pull files from other directories as reference. For example, let's say help and history. Let's copy. They have five um, files in total. Two are read only, three are editable. Here in JetBrains, I use the awesome terminal plugin and it recognizes the links. I can also click on these files to have IDE integration, which is really handy. If you go to slash tokens, you can see how much tokens these files consume. We have the three files we added as editable files and we have two files added as read only. And this column, you see the tokens consumed by them. And in total, we have 6K tokens here. If you type LS, you see all files in that Git repository, which can be added. Underneath you see the read-only files and the files added as editable files to the chat. If I want to see how it's represented in Adrian, I can use the copy context command to copy all files. I go to new scratch file and use a markdown file. And now I paste it in. I go to the preview here. Then you see attaching all files here. And it's beginning with the read-only files. Then you have the whole file contents. And then in that order, all files with the full contents. Okay, that's the current implementation. And what I have added now, let me drop all of the contents with slash drop. Now all files are gone. If you go to tokens, you see all tokens are gone, all files are gone. And now let me introduce you the add read only stub command. And with this, you can add read only files, but only the outline of these files. Let's grab 
a bunch of files here, for example, like this. Let's add it here. And then you see they are also in the read only stage area, but they have these steps to fix at the end, as you can see here, recognize, okay, only steps are added here, which can guide the LLM and give some hints about relations to other files. If I go to slash tokens here, you see these are read only files. You see the token consumption is less. These files only consume 4K tokens here because as I said, only the public interface, so to say from these files is included here. You also can see this if I copy context and paste it in our markdown file. Go to the preview mode, then you can see here, if I go up, only the definitions, the functions, the methods, the classes are included. Yeah, the same way like it's in the repository map. Okay, let's say the LLM wants more information about one file. I want to expand one file. I can do this easily. Let's say the first file, the dumpy file, we can look here. At the moment we have 38 tokens. Now I can do this with the read only uh, command, dumpy, read only. And now you see we have this as read only file, not as stubby anymore. And you also can see this if I go to the tokens, then we see now we have 193 tokens. And if I copy context, Again, paste it in. Let's go to the preview mode and scroll to the top. Then you see the file is expanded. You also see the others are still collapsed. Only the outline is visible. If you scroll down, you see something like this. This is happening because the markdown gets a little bit confused because the markdown itself use fences and sometimes it's not able to figure it out exactly how to show it. That's a common problem. If you look here, you see the stuff is added like this. Okay, this is how it works. Now I want to show you two or three real world cases where this is useful, especially for um, source code exploration of big code bases. The first thing I want to show you is the following. I was developing that feature and facing the following problem. I added this read only stop command here, but the auto completion was not working. Yeah. Normally, if you use a command like read only or add, and I paste some letters after it, it gives me some kind of auto completion and the CLI, which is really handy. As you see here, I wrote the code to show this to you. If I go and use read only stuff here and click something, the auto completion is not working. The problem was I have no idea about Python implementing this auto completion. So I used this new feature to dig into it. So I show you now what I did. I'm in a clean session here in Ada. This new feature read only stuff is really handy if you include a bunch of files or the whole repository itself, it's po uh, if it's possible, you can ask questions about it. You can also ask the LLM to let you know which files are relevant to your queries. You can use this feature to determine or predetermine a context or files which you need to include later in Ada to uh, solve yeah, a problem, for example, or to solve a task. What I did here was I use slash add first with star. It means it's adding all files. The problem is if I would use something like read only dub star, then it's including all files which are living in this directory, which is not what I want because we have also uh, compiled Python files and other stuff I do not want to include. So it's better to use add because add is looking at the git directory, at the files which living in git and only adds them to the chat. So it's easier to start with. Yeah, now it's adding all of these files to the chat. A bunch of files, as you can see here. Let's scroll down and then let me drop all the images because I know also images are inside of git which gets added here which i do not want so i remove the pngs 
and the JPEGs, click Enter. Now all of them are removed. If I scroll up, you see here removed llms.jpg, leaderboard.jpg. Now I have a clean structure, Python files in this repository, but at the moment they are full expanded. So I do not slash token because it takes too long to calculate, but I know it's more than the 200,000 token window allowed by Sonnet. The one workaround is to type in read only stop. Now all files are, we have to stop. Now I can go and say slash token tokens it's iterating and reading the content of the files and calculate the token window okay here. okay here we go you see now we have round about for the whole repository uh, 42k tokens which is not too much if i scroll up you see a lot of files added to the uh, chat context let's scroll down again ask questions about the outline of the repository what i did is let me grab the question here. I noted it down. I asked the LLM now, when I use this CLI tool Ada, I can type in comments like slash and slash remove. After I type this in, a completion pop-up opens and I can choose the file. Um, where in the code do you think is the connection between this command and the completion? Because the completion pop-up is not open, for all commands, it is not shown for the read only command, but for add and read only, it's shown. So, this, uh, yeah, I just simply type it in and then press enter. Okay, so now we can explore the answer of the large language model. And the LLM is saying that the file outlines shown that this functionality is implemented in these files common py, iopy, and main py file. The connection between the commands and the completions appears to be in the commands class. There are several methods starting with complete com underscore and then the name of the command. This naming pattern suggests that these commands that need completions have a corresponding completion star method. That was exactly the missing link I was looking for in the source code before I was searching for 20 minutes with the help of static analysis, but I was not able to find this connection because it's in convention. If you want to have a completion for your command, you need to add a completion underscore and the name of the command method to let it work. That's exactly what I did. If I look here at my changes, I deleted this before to show this to you, but you see that's exactly what I did, right? I just implemented this completions raw read only stop method here. And as you see here in this answer, uh, the large language model can also ask you for more uh, data, for more files, and you can very easily expand that the stops on a way to let the LLM know about your repository and then it can pick up files. You can go ahead with for the investigation. Another thing what we can do here Let's ask another question. We can, for example, ask which files are in interest for me if I want to implement a new coder class in Ada. Let's fire this question. Okay, the answer is streaming in. If we want to implement a new coder class, yeah, we have, for example, the base coder, the base prompts. We have also an example implementation here, the whole coder, aided block coder and so on. And we have also associated prompts, which are here. The whole file prompts, edit block prompts, and we have the test for it. So the outline helps the LLM to give us back the context we need for a further investigation to solve a task or a problem. We can use the flash copy context command, for example, to copy all of the outlines of all these files. This takes a little while to copy the content into memory, into the clipboard. Okay, and now we can go to Notebook LM. You can copy text, include the copy text from the clipboard, and I paste it in here. And I delete because we do not want to change something here. But the rest are the files here, you see, the outline 
of all these files and I say insert. And now I can ask the code base using uh, Gemini, which has a really huge context window of, I think, 1 million. And now I can ask questions. I can ask for creating a brief document, a timeline, and so on. And I can also ask stuff here, for example, create a mermaid diagram 2, which you will the raw architecture of Ada. Okay, now we have a little overview about the user interactions, core editing and other components of Ada. Okay, so let me know what you think about this in the comments below. I plan to make more videos about generative AI, AI enhanced development and also using coding assistance like Ada. So if you are interested in that, you can subscribe my channel. Happy AI coding.